Hi everyone, and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. I wanna share some thoughts about Mark Bunker winning his election for Clearwater City Council. I've been meaning to do this for the last six weeks, but better late than never, I guess. On March 17th, Mark Bunker won his election for seat two of Clearwater City Council. For those of you familiar with the Scientology and the Aftermath TV show, Mark Bunker was featured in the two episodes that focused on Clearwater and Scientology's history in Clearwater. Those two episodes covered a lot of the detail of Mark's history as an activist uh, exposing Scientology abuses and particularly the history of how he came to be here in Clearwater exposing Scientology abuse here in Clearwater. And the, the show went into a lot of detail about that. So if you're familiar with the show and if you're familiar with Clearwater, you're probably familiar with Mark. There weren't any Scientologists challenging Mark for this seat on the city council. There were no Scientologists running against him, but there was a candidate that Scientology specifically endorsed and backed. And it also happened to be the only candidate desperate or stupid enough to accept and want that endorsement. And the candidate Scientology was endorsing heavily. His name was Alicio Santana. There were four other candidates running against Mark for seat two. So a total of five candidates. And out of five candidates, Scientology's candidate came in fourth with 15% of the vote. Mark ended up winning with 27% of the vote. The guy behind him, Michael Menino, had 26.1% of the vote. Mark ended up winning by like 194 votes in a city of 116,000 people. So in the top three, you had Mark Bunker with 27% of the vote, Michael Menino with 26.1% of the vote, and Lena Teixeira with 20% of the vote. I think it's worth noting that out of the five people running for seat two, the three candidates that came in with the most votes were also the three candidates who were the most outspoken against Scientology bullying and Scientology abuse during the campaign. So to me, there are a few things that makes Mark's win really incredible. It's not so much that he beat Scientology per se, because Scientology wasn't running anyone against him. Yes, they endorsed a candidate against him, but the candidate they endorsed was terrible. Like, Alicia was a horrible candidate. Uh, in the forums, he just, he, he did terribly answering the questions. He was almost, uh, he was almost a joke. People were laughing at him, not with him. And he really had no chance. But they certainly did everything they could, as Keystone Copish as it was. They did everything they could and everything within their power to prevent Mark from winning, to be sure. But what makes this victory incredible, one of the things that makes it incredible to me, isn't that he beat Scientology. It's that he beat Michael Menino. Michael Menino was and is an incredibly qualified candidate for Clearwater City Council. First of all, he happens to be a friend of mine. And to me, that means something in this town. Michael is not someone who's afraid to be seen or known or associated with me. And uh, what that really means to me is he's not afraid of Scientology. That was crystal clear during the campaign. Some of his answers were extremely strong against the sort of bullying, abusive, childish behavior that Scientology demonstrates in the community. He's also a successful and respected small business owner in this town. Mike has tons of support in the local community. He's actively involved in tons of community groups. He's also very involved in the underserved neighborhoods of Clearwater. He's very involved in church groups. He had a huge persistent presence on social media all during the campaign. He wasn't one of these candidates who just gets involved just before and during the campaign season so that people see him. He's someone who has been deeply involved for a very long time. I actually tried very hard to get Mark not to run against Mike. <laughs> not because I thought Mike was gonna beat Mark, but because I was very sure Mark was going to win and I didn't want it to be an either or. I wanted both of them to be on the council. Actually, Mark was running against two friends of mine. Well, I've already mentioned them, Mike and Lena, Lena Teixeira. They're both friends of mine. And I wanted, uh, I didn't want Mark running against both of them. I wanted the result to either be Mark and Mike or Mark and Lena. All, all, either of those combinations would have been great. The reason I'm talking about Michael specifically here is because he's the one who came in second. And so all of this is to say that Michael was a fantastic candidate who ran a fantastic campaign. And despite all that, the huge groundswell of distrust that the citizens of Clearwater have for the Church of Scientology and Mark's relentless messaging that he was running primarily to stand up to Scientology and their bullying behavior was enough to carry Mark to victory 
anyway. And I really want to beat on this for a little while to like really drive this point home of uh, give it even a greater context to show how impressive this was. Mark barely even had a campaign. Mark didn't even have a campaign manager. In the very beginning, me and Mike Rinder were like the de facto advisors, campaign managers, because there was no one else. And me and Mike and Leah Remini are the ones who were sort of harassing Mark to get him to run for city council in the first place. So we had this ownership for the campaign that we were gonna do whatever was needed to see this thing to, through to the end, whether there was anyone else there doing it or not. We sure as hell didn't wanna be the ones running the whole thing. But in the beginning, there was no one else. So we were just kind of there doing something we'd never done before. Mike and I both tried using all of our connections to scrounge up somebody willing to be the dedicated campaign manager and we could not do it. And this was due to fear of putting themselves on the radar of Scientology. So we did manage to find somebody to be the treasurer, which is pretty much the only position that has to be filled in a campaign. And then Mark hired these two very young, smart women who had just taken over a political consultancy group here in town. And so the entire staff of the campaign consisted of Mark, these two consultants, and the treasurer. <laughs> and me and Mike were just like advisors. And that was it. And Mike and I were able to help in many different ways. One of the main ways was helping the consultants understand how unique Mark's campaign was because of the central role of Scientology. Uh, in the beginning, the consultants did not want Mark to talk very much about Scientology. They, they were really worried about Mark being perceived as a single issue candidate. And there were many meetings <laughs> where it was just repeated over and over and over um, by Mike and myself, but mostly Mike. Uh, you know, look, there's one reason someone's gonna to go to the polls on March 17th and vote for Mark Bunker. And it's not gonna be because of what he thinks about parking or traffic or affordable housing or roundabouts or taxes. It's gonna be because of Scientology. This is a unique campaign. You guys definitely know what you're talking about, but you don't know much about Scientology. So we're gonna have a meeting of two worlds here and we're gonna figure out the best strategy. So we continue to advise and we were also able to help Mark um, uh, organize putting on a couple events and also able to help connect Mark up with about a dozen, I'm gonna guess about a dozen, fantastic local volunteers who are familiar with the program, familiar with Mark, um, Mark's announcement to run and wanting to help make this happen for all the right reasons. The volunteers were hugely instrumental in um, uh, gathering up the original 200 signatures of registered voters needed to get Mark's name on the ballot in the first place. Uh, they also played a huge role in helping hand out some uh, promotional material later on in the campaign for Mark and distributing yard signs and things like that. And uh, their help was fantastic. And I'm going to get this uh, slightly wrong, but the campaign season started, I can't remember if it was September or October, lasted until March. And truth be told, during that whole period, when you compare how much campaigning Mark did, depending on how you define that, you know, knocking on doors, uh, going to meetings, groups, when you compare how much campaigning Mark did, how much campaigning uh, Michael Menino did or how much campaigning Lena Teixeira did. Relatively, he didn't actually do that much campaigning. And yet his message about standing up to Scientology, about standing up to bullies, about wanting to be the voice for those who don't feel like they have one, was so strong that he won anyway. And there were a couple other things that were definitely helpful. So um, Mike and I did everything we could on social media to help get the word out. Uh, within Clearwater about Mark's campaign. Leah Remini also up with that big time. Uh, the Tampa Bay Times did a lot of coverage of this city council race. Uh, there have never been more people running for city council ever than were running for the three open seats um, that were available uh, this campaign season. And anytime the Tampa Bay Times wrote about the campaign or about Mark, they of course included the information that his primary message on the campaign was standing up to Scientology. So that absolutely helped get the word out. And Mark, <laughs> Mark and his campaign also did get a very positive mention in Us Weekly like a week and a half or like a week before the actual election. So I'm sure that didn't hurt. So I know I might be getting a little repetitive on this point by now, but truly and honestly, the people of Clearwater were so hungry for a candidate that would boldly and unapologetically stand up to Scientology, that even despite all the various ways in which the campaign was uh, somewhat handicapped, 
it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Scientology is such a hot button here in Clearwater. The people are so fed up with Scientology's behavior. They are so fed up with feeling like there's nothing they can do about it. That that was the magic message. That's all they wanted. They wanted someone who was going to stand up to Scientology. And as I said, both Michael Menino and Lena Teixeira were pretty bold in their own right, in their statements about not being willing to put up with this garbage from Scientology. And I do think that the fact that they were not shy about that, I think contributed to the fact that why they finished in the top three as well. But you can't out Bunker Mark Bunker. <laughs> so I hope that provides some additional context to illustrate just how impressive Mark's victory really is. It's not so much that he beat Scientology, but that his message about standing up to Scientology was so well received that it allowed him to beat two incredibly qualified candidates who ran a hell of a campaign and, to the best of my knowledge, had a lot more funds raised than Mark did. So anyway, I won't beat it to death, but definitely wanted to say that. So other than providing context to illustrate how impressive the victory was, I wanted to share some thoughts on why this campaign was so important to me personally. The first and primary reason is I'm just so tired of people thinking that Scientology owns this town. I live in Clearwater, obviously. I am so tired of the church benefiting from the fact that uh, so many people believe this organization has so many more members and so much more influence than it really does. And that includes local people. I mean, even people that are right here are under this mistaken belief that this church is much bigger and much more influential than it really is. It has been somewhat of a priority of mine to do whatever I can in whatever little way I can to get people to understand that this organization is not as big and intimidating and influential as they would like everyone to believe they are. They're not really worthy of the fear anymore. They're still benefiting from a reputation they earned decades ago. The kinds of things this organization has done in the past to people, former members, journalists, media outlets, and even the government, they cannot get away with doing those kinds of things anymore. There's too many people watching. There's too many people who already understand the nature of who they are and what they do. And so because they can't get away with it, there's nowhere near as much to fear today as there used to be. And yet, unfortunately, many people, and including locals, don't quite get that. Scientology still benefits from the fact that people are afraid of them. Scientology still benefits of the fact that people are intimidated by them. They benefit from the fact that people are concerned about being harassed by them. They benefit from the fact that people believe they will be sued by them. And they also benefit from the fact that people, including a lot of politicians, believe that this organization is much, much larger than it really is. And this is one of the primary reasons that this campaign was so important to me personally. This campaign was finally gonna be an opportunity to show in the real world with real numbers and real people how small and ineffective this organization really is and that it's nothing to be afraid of if you're a, a civic leader, if you're a politician, if you're a business leader, if you're just a local citizen of Clearwater. It is nothing worthy of your fear. This campaign was an opportunity to demonstrate that in two different ways. The primary way was just the fact that you have Mark there and he's there doing it, running. He's speaking at public meetings as a candidate, calling out the Church of Scientology on his bad behavior. He's standing there, not afraid. Everyone watching will have the opportunity to see that not, not only is he standing there not afraid, but nothing happens to him. There were several forums, I don't know what the right word, they weren't debates, I guess, I, I think we called them forums, where all the candidates would come and there was a moderator and there were questions and all the candidates would answer the questions. Scientology sent a lot of people to these meetings to shout Mark down, call him a bigot, try to get him flustered, interrupt him whenever he would speak, literally shouting from the audience. That's something that might be intimidating to some people, but it shouldn't be, because it's just noise, it's just bluster. And Mark stood there, unaffected, and said, I would love to talk to anyone. I will talk to any Scientologist after this meeting, one-on-one, -on -one, privately, but you know, I'm gonna finish what I'm saying here, so please let me finish. So you had Mark there, doing his thing, campaigning, being a candidate, showing he's not afraid to put his name and his face out there. You have Mike and I there showing up to these meetings. We are demonstrating through our actions that we are not afraid of this organization, we are not afraid of their tactics, 
We are not afraid of the fallout. And you can all see nothing's happening to us. They're not doing anything effective whatsoever. Okay, that's the first way this thing gets demonstrated, that this organization is not worthy of your fear anymore. The other thing was just through, through sheer numbers, by demonstrating that not only does this organization not have the membership and therefore the votes required to get any of their own members elected to any office in the city, county, or the state, but they can't do anything to prevent anyone from being elected. And this is something I've been saying for years, but this was finally the opportunity to prove it. So before I roll into the election numbers and how this election did finally prove just how small Scientology is, I wanna to touch on something that might seem like a tangent, but I promise that it's not, this is actually very relevant. Just as I just mentioned uh, that Scientology benefits from these uh, misunderstandings that people, or misconceptions people have about it, uh, Scientology actually benefits from these misconceptions. There's another thing they benefit from, and that's a general misunderstanding of some of the things that, that get reported about Clearwater. So for example, here's what I'm referring to specifically. About six months ago, the Tampa Bay Times wrote an article about the Downtown Development Board in Clearwater. It was October 2019. The Tampa Bay Times ran an article headlined, Scientologists Win Majority on Downtown Clearwater Board. Now this article discussed the Downtown Development Board and described how uh, an election had just occurred and now four of the seven seats on this board were held by Scientologists. This is an example of where Scientology benefits from a misunderstanding of some of the very accurate things that get reported. Almost nobody knows what the hell a Downtown Development Board is. <laughs> and Downtown Development Board uh, wasn't actually in the title. So if you just read the title and you didn't read it very closely and you didn't fully understand what was going on, you could now think that the Clearwater City Council now had a majority Scientologist on it. And I say this because a lot of people contacted me saying, oh shit, I guess Mark lost. And I was like, Mark didn't lose. The election hasn't even occurred yet. That article wasn't talking about the city council. It was talking about the downtown development board. The article itself was fantastic. Tracy McManus did a great job reporting on this thing. Um, but apparently a lot of people just read headlines and apparently some of those people that read headlines don't fully understand what they're reading. I'm just bringing this up as one example of where you have something that actually happened in real life, it gets accurately reported on and yet it gets broadly misunderstood. So the Downtown Development Board is an elected board. However, that election, only like 200 something votes were cast in that election. Do you know how many votes were cast for the city council election? like 22,000. So the reason this board is elected by such a small group of people is because in order to have a vote on who gets to be on this board, you have to own property in downtown Clearwater. And the article did a great job of explaining there are 905 properties that qualify uh, to have a vote. By the way, it's one property, one vote. If you own 10 properties, you have 10 votes. So to make this whole explanation as brief as possible, out of the 905 properties that exist in the area that is, uh, let's just say under the jurisdiction of this downtown development board, only 375 of them actually registered to vote in this election for the downtown development board. Out of the 375 properties that were registered to vote, only 232 of them actually cast a vote. And I can guarantee you over 60% of those properties are owned by Scientologists. Over 60%, probably 80% of the votes cast in this election were cast by Scientologists. What's remarkable about there being four members who are Scientologists on this seven member board isn't that they were able to get four. What's remarkable is that they haven't been able to get seven so it's, what's funny is if you actually look into this article and read it carefully and understand it, it would actually continue to prove that Scientology does not seem to have as much influence as it should. And yet the article was largely interpreted um, that Scientology has, oh my God, has taken over Clearwater when nothing could be further from the truth. And special note is that Mark Bunker, in his capacity as a city council person, is now has now been appointed onto that very board, the Downtown Development Board. And just for anyone that cares, this board basically has discretion over a fund that's about $267,000 per year in revenues paid from this special tax from these 905 properties. And this board, all they do is vote 
on uh, the, the, the money can only be used to fund events, market downtown and attract new businesses. That's all this board does is vote on how they're gonna use this money in that narrow scope, that very narrow mission. And that's all they do. If you win an election where only 200 people voted and 60 to 80% of those people were on your team, you didn't do anything all that great. All right, so let's get into the numbers of Mark's election and let's really look at here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into a lot of detail on this. So I'm gonna try not to lose you. I'm gonna try to keep this concise and uh, pithy and interesting. But um, uh, this election really showed how tiny Scientology is. You're really not gonna believe this when we actually dig into this. Scientology claims to have 15,000 members living in Incorporated Clearwater. The real number is closer to 2,000, 2,500 people. That number includes all staff members, all Sea Org members, and public. That 2,500 figure, the vast majority of that figure is the staff in the Sea Org. And the vast majority of the staff in the Sea Org are here on visas. They're Eastern European, they're from the Balkan states, they're from Russia, they're from South America. They can't vote. But what politician would know that? No politician would know that. Where are they gonna get this information from? There's no way to get a list or a count of how many Scientologists are really there. Uh, these politicians, these public figures, all they can do is take Scientology's word for it. But Scientology lies out their ass about this stuff constantly. There are maybe 4,000 Scientologists living in all of Tampa Bay. And when I say Tampa Bay, I mean Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa, and the surrounding neighborhoods. That's not 4,000 who can vote in Clearwater. That includes towns, uh, I just got a little list here. That includes Tampa, St. Petersburg, Largo, Dunedin, Safety Harbor, Arizona, Palm Harbor, Tarpon Springs, uh, Landsbrook, Oldsmar. Uh, Scientologists live in these areas. That doesn't mean they can vote in Clearwater elections. And when, when, when Scientology says they have 15,000 members living in Clearwater, they don't mean Tampa Bay. They don't mean St. Pete. They mean Clearwater. They want you to believe they can get 15,000 people to the polls in Clearwater. They can't. How do you prove how many Scientologists live in Clearwater? You get Mark Bunker to run for city council. <laughs> the fact that Mark was running in this election um, affected Scientologists' voting behaviors. Because in previous elections, it's not necessarily true that all Scientologists would rally around one candidate. As long as a, Scient as long as a candidate is seen as not being hostile to Scientology, there's someone a Scientologist would vote for. The problem for Scientology in this election is that there was a huge amount of pressure on them to make sure Mark Bunker did not win. And you don't achieve that goal of preventing Mark from winning by splitting the vote. You've got to focus those votes onto one candidate. And that candidate, as I mentioned before, was Alicio Santana. So the Church of Scientology, through its Office of Special Affairs, through its little front group headed by Joni Siegel and Steve Siegel and Brett Miller, unequivocally endorsed Alicio Santana as their candidate. He was their guy, and their guy got a grand total of 3,200 votes. So even if you wanted to say that every vote Alicio got was from a Scientologist, which is ridiculous, of course that's not true, but even if you wanted to say that, you would still have to conclude that in an election that was super high stakes for Scientology, the best they could do in Clearwater was get 3,200 people to the polls. That's terrible, and yet we know that's not the real number. Because Alicio had actual support from actual people in the community. Alicio had major support from the Latino community here in Clearwater. He also had small pockets of support from some of the veterans groups here in town. We know that to be true. So how should we go about estimating how many of Alicio's 3,200 votes came from non-Scientologists? We can try to back into it a few different ways. And we won't know that these approaches and these numbers are 100% correct, but we know we're in the ballpark. And if you do it a few different ways, you can kind of bracket it and see, okay, what's the, what's the low number likely? What's the high number likely? I think one good way to estimate how many non-Scientologists may have voted for Alicio is to look at the guy who finished behind Alicio. Alicio finished fourth out of five. So who's the guy that finished in last place and how many votes did he get? Bruce Rector came in fifth place and he got 2,700 votes. 2,700 votes from non-Scientologists and we know that because we know with a pretty high degree of certainty that any Scientologist who voted for seat two voted for Alicio, or they didn't vote at all. 
there's no reason for a Scientologist to vote for Bruce Rector. There's just zero reason. So if Bruce got 2,700 votes, then let's just take that as a starting point. Let's say 2,700 non-Scientologists also voted for Alicio. Well, that only leaves 500 other votes. Alicio got 3,200 votes. If we do it that way, 500 votes is what Scientology was able to mobilize in this last city council election. Let's back into it two other ways and see how the results compare. For the next method, let's begin with my assertion based on personal knowledge, personal experience, and other publicly available data points. That there's about 2,500 Scientologists living in incorporated Clearwater, including not just the public, but also staff and Sea Org. Let's take the voter turnout statistics for all of Clearwater and apply those statistics to the 2,500 Scientologists that I'm asserting live in incorporated Clearwater. In these latest elections, there's about 116,000 citizens in Clearwater. 67% of those were registered to vote. Of those who are registered to vote, 32% of them actually voted. Let's take those stats and apply them to the 2,500 Scientologists. It's starting to rain, I hope you can't hear that. So you have 2,500 Scientologists, if 67% 67 of those are registered to vote, and if 32% of those who were registered actually voted, you'd have 540 votes. Pretty damn close to the 500, we're still in the ballpark. But this second method has a problem. This second method doesn't account for a couple things. It doesn't account for the fact that Scientology's own workforce accounts for a vast majority of that 2,500 people, and doesn't account for the fact that the vast majority of those guys not eligible to vote. So it doesn't account for that. The other thing it does not account for is the incredibly high, I'm gonna call it compliance rate, that we would see amongst those who are eligible to vote of that 2,500. What I mean by that is, you have the 2,500, let's say 70% of them aren't even eligible to vote because they're not citizens. You have 30% remaining. Of those 30%, you're gonna get damn near 100% of those guys registered to vote and damn near 100% of those registered are actually gonna vote because of what a high stakes election this was for Scientology. So for our third method, we're going to account for these things. We're gonna take 2,500 staff, Sea Org, public, total. We're going to say only 30% of them are eligible to vote. And we're going to say 90% of that 30% register and vote. And when we crunch the numbers that way, we get to 607 votes. After attempting to back into three different ways, how many of Alicio's 3,200 votes could have been Scientologists versus non-Scientologists, we still arrive at a conclusion somewhere between five and 600, five to 600. Those numbers could be slightly off for a number of reasons, but they're not that off. That is in the ballpark of how many votes Scientology can actually mobilize in a high stakes election, in its own backyard, in a city they claim to own, in a city they claim to have 15,000 members living in. They could mobilize. 600 votes. They can't get any of their own members elected. They can't prevent anyone else from getting elected. They can't get more than 600 people to the polls. Do you think now maybe politicians will start getting the message that this organization is nothing like what it pretends to be? That it has nowhere near the membership it pretends to have? That it has no real world influence beyond what it can buy? through lobbyists, and maybe some friendly visits from Tom Cruise. It has no political capital whatsoever when it comes to getting anybody elected, getting anybody reelected, or preventing anybody from getting elected. Mark Bunker's campaign and his victory has proven this once and for all. And that is the number one reason this campaign was so important to me. We need to change the perception that Scientology owns this town. They don't. They own a lot of real estate. Good for them. We need to change this perception, and I believe that perception can only be changed from the top down. And that is why Mark's victory is, I believe, just now the beginning of what hopefully will be a new age for Clearwater. And I know that's a cliche. I don't mean to like sound it in some corny way. But like, look, 
in order to change the perception, you have to do it from the top down. We didn't have the ability to do it from the top down until now. Mark has opened that door. Just his presence on the council sends the message. Scientology doesn't own this town. Him being on the council sends the message. You don't have to be afraid of these guys. I'm not afraid of these guys. If I'm not afraid of them, you don't need to be afraid of them either. I believe Mark being on the council and everything that will come from that is what is part of what will allow the people of Clearwater to start coming back downtown and patronizing all of the wonderful businesses that are down there that people think are owned by Scientology or Scientologists and aren't. And I know as I sit here right now doing this video, I may not have uh, done a great job directly linking a line between March presence on the council and people coming back to downtown Clearwater. But I believe there is a connection. I believe setting the tone from the top that it's okay to come back downtown. It's okay not to be afraid of these guys. It's okay not to be intimidated by them. And that actually the best thing you can do if you have a problem with them is to come back downtown. Because by abandoning downtown or by not coming downtown often enough or going other places, you leave it to them. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off track, but I really do feel this is a turning point. I do believe that Mark Bunker winning his campaign against some very stiff competition while barely campaigning with relatively little funds and with no campaign manager shows that the people of Clearwater are really paying attention to anything to do with Scientology and that they are fed up. And I believe their vote for Mark indicates that they do have the appetite to stand up to Scientology's bad behavior in this town. And I believe that attitude is very closely tied with bringing back Clearwater's downtown business district, coming back downtown, and for lack of a better phrase, taking it back. I believe all these guys that cast their vote for Mark Bunker are prepared to take it back. And that doesn't mean the Scientologists are going anywhere, because they're not. Uh, but they don't have to. All the citizens of Clearwater have to do is go back downtown, patronize those businesses. The city leadership is working very hard on getting even more businesses open down there for people to come down to. There's a lot of great places to go downtown. Downtown Clearwater is coming back. I mean, I made a little list. Capitol Theater, Clear Sky Cafe, Roxy's, Tequila's, the Chiang Mai Sushi Bar, Downtown Pizza, Grindhouse Cafe, Black Brick Tavern, soon, hopefully, Poor Yours Wine Bar, La Fondita Del Leo, and then there's a sandwich shop next to that that I, uh, I forgot. And we got some great spots downtown, and we're going to have a lot more. I think the future for Clearwater is very bright, and I think Mark Bunker is a big part of that. That's my take on it anyway. I absolutely dare Scientology to run one of its own members in the next election, which is in less than two years from now. I've got $1,000 that says they won't even try it, not even with one of their big, bad OT business owners, not even with Pat Cloudin, not even with Stu Showerman, none of them. And who knows? Maybe in a couple of years, we'll end up with a SP caucus on the Clearwater City Council. You never know. Thanks for watching all of this. If you've watched all the way to the end and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, if you wanna see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you wanna see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe.